This video works through an expected value problem involving an imaginary ski shop called Sam's Ski Shop. Sam's Ski Shop rents skis, boots, and poles for $25 a day. The daily cost for upkeep per set of skis is $6. This includes maintenance, storage, and overhead. Daily income depends on the daily demand for skis and the number of sets available. Sam knows that on a typical weekend, the daily demand for skis is given in this table. So, for example, sometimes Sam gets 85 customers. That happens 0.125 is the fraction of time that happens, or 12.5% of the time. Sometimes he gets 86 customers. That happens 0.15 fraction of the time, or 15% of the time, and so on. Now, let's suppose that Sam has 87 sets of skis to rent out. We want to figure out his expected daily profit. So I'm going to make a table involving all the things that can happen, their probability, and the financial outcome. Since this problem involves both income and expenses, and we're going to need to take the difference of those to get profit, I'm actually going to divide the, the financial outcome into two columns. I'll do the income and separately the expenses and then finally a column for the profit. So what are the things that could happen affecting his, his financial outcomes? Well, because we're using a very simplified problem, we don't, we're not worrying about the details of weather and holidays and so on, we're just focused on the number of customers, which I suppose could depend on things like weather and holidays, but we're just gonna use this table for the different things can, that can happen. So the things that could happen is we could get 85 customers with probability 0.125 or 86 customers with probability 0.15. I'm just copying this table down below. Now, what kind of income is Sam going to get in each of these cases? Well, remember, he has 87 sets of skis. So if 85 customers come by, he's going to rent 85 of those sets of skis which means he's going to earn 85 times the $25 per pair of skis. His expenses, however, will be for all 87 sets of skis. Even if he doesn't rent them, he still has to store them, maintain them, and has the overhead for them. So his expenses are going to be 87 times that $6. And so his profit will be the difference 85 times 25 minus 87 times 6. A similar thing happens if he gets 86 customers one day. So that will have an income of 86 times 25, expenses of 87 times 6, and a profit of the difference. If 87 customers show up, he'll rent all 87 skis, and he'll pay the maintenance for all 87. But something a little bit different happens if there are 88 customers who show up. He only has 87 sets of skis to rent, so he's only going to be able to get an income of 87 times the $25. The same thing would happen if 89 customers show up. He still can only rent 87 skis, and get the maintenance costs will also be a fixed cost of 87 times 6. So his profit in the last three cases is going to be the same each time. Now to figure out the expected value, his expected profit, I'm going to need to multiply my profits in each situation by the probability of that situation and then add those all up. So that's going to give me, in the first row, I'm going to multiply this probability by this profit, which gives me a dollar amount of 20375. Continuing to multiply profits by probabilities, I can fill in my column as follows. My expected value is the sum of these numbers, which is $1,643 exactly. Notice that since the expenses column is always the same no matter how many customers show up, we could have done this problem a different way and just focused on 
the expected income and subtracted the fixed expenses at the end. If we just looked at the expected income, expected value for income, we could have calculated that by multiplying our income dollar amounts by the probabilities and added them all up. And that would have given us an expected income of 2,165. And then when we subtract the fixed expenses, 87 times $6 is $522 we would have gotten 2165 minus 522, which works out to the same expected profit of $1,643. I actually worked this problem out by putting this whole table into a spreadsheet. That makes it easy to adapt the problem in the case that Sam stocks a different number of set of skis instead of 87, maybe 88 or 86. One handy trick is to use a formula for income. Notice that we're always multiplying by 25, but the number that we multiply is sometimes the number of customers and sometimes the number of skis. In fact, we multiply by whichever of those numbers is smaller because we won't rent any more skis than we have customers and we won't, won't rent any more skis than we have skis. So we need to multiply 25 by the minimum of the number of customers and the number of skis. In this case, that'd be the minimum of whatever's in this cell to the left. So that might be like A2, the cell A2, for example, for the first one, and 87. And then we can drag that formula down and it should correctly update to give us the rest of these income values. So that concludes the Sam Ski Shop expected value problem for when Sam stocks 87 sets of skis. Ultimately, Sam wants to know how many sets of skis to stock in order to be as profitable as possible. So ultimately, we need to help Sam out by um, repeating that expected value calculation in the case where he stocks 88 sets of skis or 89 sets of skis or 85 or 86 sets of skis. There's no need to worry about stocking fewer than 85 sets or because then we wouldn't have enough skis for even the minimum number of customers expected or to stock more than 89 since then we'd always have extra skis that we're paying expenses for but not renting out.